the Nintendo Switch 2 Joy-Cons are upgraded in basically every way. Nintendo even says they've upgraded the analog sticks. I'm a little skeptical, so let's get them opened up and see if they're actually better. We have a tri-point screw over here and over here. And with those screws removed, we should be able to pry off this part of the shell right here. There's a pretty strong clip right there. And then after we get that clip off, we can remove this middle piece right here. This reminds me of taking apart a PlayStation 5 controller. We got some clips and some adhesive. There we go. Then we've got one tri-point and one Phillips screw because, you know, wouldn't want to use the same type of screw on the whole thing. And with those two screws removed, this back piece just pops right off, revealing the inside. Here's our HD Rumble 2.0 motor. We'll disconnect that by using some sharp needle nose pliers, pulling up on the connector while we wiggle back and forth, just like that. Now the little button that pushes out this pen to remove the Joy-Con, this actually just lifts right out. Next, we can pry up on this button and remove it. Then we can remove this screw and this screw. And then this black piece pops up just like that. And we can remove this screw, this screw, this screw, and this battery connector. And this whole assembly will pull up just like that. We do have one ribbon cable we need to release with its locking tab. Just like that, and we can pull that out. It is unfortunate that Nintendo put this button in the same place without really any reinforcement. I guess the plastic piece that goes over this will sort of reinforce it, but these break off. People push too hard on these and it just pushes the button back and they break. So. I was hoping to see a little bit more of a robust button here, but obviously do not see that. Now we are down to the analog stick. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's remove the rest of the board and then we can get this blue piece off. The board is held on by one, two, three, four, five screws. And then of course, these ribbon cables also need to be disconnected and removed from the connectors. And with all those screws removed, we can lift up and pull out the board. And with the board removed, we can also remove this rail right here. And then we can get to the analog stick. We've just got two screws. These analog sticks, I can already tell, are significantly different than any of the other switches. And there is the analog stick. And we have a pretty simple board layout. We just got all the buttons right here and the top button right there. And then kind of the main chip on the board is right here and then just a bunch of connectors and components. Let's next remove these four screws so we can check out the magnets on the Joy-Con rail. All right, and with those screws removed, we can pull up on this guy, I think. Yep, there we go. So the release button has a spring on it right there. And this is good news. This centerpiece is the connector for the Joy-Con and that is modular and pretty easy to remove if you need to replace it. That's great news. And then we have the large metal button that the magnet attaches to, and that's all there is to it. We got one here, and then we got one under here. And on the ribbon cable, we've got a button here, and this is the sensor for the mouse function. And then pretty much just the same thing on the other side. Another button here, another button here, and then a large metal button for the magnets to connect to. Now let's take a look at this analog stick and see if it's actually been upgraded. So this is the previous analog stick. This is the new and improved analog stick. They definitely look different, but let's figure out if they're different on the inside. So this is the old style analog stick. We've got little metal, metal wipers right here and right here. Those correspond with these pads right over here and right over here. The problem with this style of analog stick is these little wipers rub on these pads and eventually wear out the pads. Now, if this was a Hall Effect analog stick, these would all, re all be replaced with magnets and sensors, so there's no actual physical connection. That's why Hall Effect sticks are so much better. So this is from the previous switches. Let's open up this new and improved analog stick. 
So this one has this little plastic cover over it. Not really sure what the point of that is. I guess to prevent dust from getting in there, even though it still totally can. This little flap right here is covering up the inside of the analog stick, which is great for cleaning, but it can make it so dust can get in there easier. So I hope there's more to this redesign than just this little plastic cover. Well, this metal piece is definitely really strong. Oh, we got more metal pieces on the side here too, okay. I didn't really want to do this because this is probably going to ruin this analog stick, but you know, anything for you guys, right? It's for science. These are definitely not meant to be cleaned like this or repaired or anything, unfortunately. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready to see these redesigned and improved analog sticks? What do we have? So we have... I mean, it's essentially exactly the same. These little wipers are just way smaller than on the other switch analog sticks. So maybe since they're smaller, they will cause less drag on these pads. I mean, that's possible, but I don't know. Honestly, I'm not impressed with this redesign. I think we're just gonna see stick drift on these Joy-Cons kinda like we did with the previous switches. I hope I'm wrong, but this doesn't look like too much of a redesign to me. So the other thing is I mentioned Hall Effect sticks that use magnets, but the problem is the Switch Joy-Cons use magnets over here. So if they use magnets also in the analog sticks, that could cause the analog sticks to not register correctly. So I think that's why they didn't go with Hall effect analog sticks on the Switch 2, but I really wish they could have done something different than this. And one last thing I wanna look at is the battery on these. Unfortunately, there's some really strong adhesive on this battery. This is totally unnecessary. Come on. Oh my goodness. All right and not really any information on the battery itself, but if you have to replace this, it's gonna be a real pain. These are listed as 500 milliamp hour batteries, so they should have okay battery life. Even though that adhesive is way too strong in my opinion, you can just put it back and it sticks down nicely again. So overall, I love the Switch 2 Joy-Cons. I think they've got a lot of great features. I don't think the analog sticks are gonna be amazing, and I think they're also gonna have problems with drift, just like the previous Joy-Cons. If you haven't seen my teardown video for the Switch 2 tablet, I'll put a link for that up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see what's inside that one. Let me know if you wanna see anything else from the Switch 2 torn down. I'd be happy to do it. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.